Today we stand here celebrating the 75th anniversary of our Independence Day. However, not one of us was there during those days when we fought, when our ancestors stood together and fought against the occupying force of the British. Things were difficult, a lot of sacrifices were given, people died to give us the flag that we hold dear to us today. I'll tell you a small story. When I was a kid, something like you, my father took me to a place called as Munar. I'm sure you know about the hill station close by. So Munar was where my father's father grew up and my dad also grew up there for some portion of his life. Uh, my father being an army officer, his father was also in the army fought with the British in the Second World War in the Burmese campaign. So when he was in Monar, he was there in the tea plantations there. Kanan Devan Tea Estate used to be uh, quite a prominent name in Monar. So when I went to Monar with my father, I was just a young kid like you, not very happy to see different places that he was showing me. Look at this, this is a tea garden, look at that mountain, so beautiful. Eventually, he took, took us to some kind of a bakery or a confectionery shop. And uh, we were wondering as to there's nothing great here. We had come from Delhi. And for a Delhiite with all his arrogance, it seemed like a very small place. But I saw something in my father. You know, he stood there, his chest filled up with pride and he was looking all over. And I was wondering what is going on in this old man's head. So he turns around and he tells us that, son, do you know? There was a time when we were not permitted to enter this shop. This was a Britishers only exclusive shop with confectionaries and what not. And there used to be a board outside which said Indians and dogs not permitted. We don't even get a grasp of what that feeling is because we've been born into an independent India where it's easy to speak your mind, speak your words, wear what you want, do what you want one of the largest democracies in the world. But with all this freedom comes responsibility, immense responsibility. For each one of us, it's easy to put the blame on somebody, it's easy to put the blame on the government. What have we done for the country is what we need to ask. It's not just good enough that you are a good citizen. Your actions also require you to reach out to others and help them become good citizens. You believe in keeping the country neat and clean is a good start, but your actions should also be able to motivate the other person to follow suit. Somebody throws a garbage down, pick it up, put it in a garbage can and speak to that person and say, sir, this is our country, we need to keep it clean. Small actions will lead to, you know, a great change and revolution in the country's future. Today, we consider the youth, the kids who are sitting here, the bright smiling faces with your mask on top. You are the future of this country. India has come a long way with ups and downs and today we look forward to a much brighter future a great nation which is looked upon by the global world. Where does it start? It starts here. It starts today. Each of you has the potential to do amazing things. Each of you is by yourself enough. I mean, there are kids here who are good in studies, there are kids here who uh, may not be good in studies, who may be sitting at the back and wondering as to, is he addressing me? I'm talking about each one of you, every one of you. What makes a difference is how you think. It's mind over body. It's your mental perception towards things, towards life, towards difficult times, towards adversity. 
Let's say, for example, that one of you is into a coma and loses his memory and one fine day wakes up. Absolutely no idea who he is, who he was. And I walk up to him and I tell him that you were an amazing, you know, guitarist. Or I tell him that you were an amazing army officer who was brave and courageous and you defeated the enemy at such a battlefield. Just imagine that person, would he live life and do things the way he would have normally done? He would believe that he's an amazing guitarist. So when he goes for learning guitar, he already thinks he knows and it's just his fingers which have lost track. When he walks out, he thinks that, yes, I was an army officer, I was brave and bold and I will take those actions which are expected of me. All that strength is in your mind. As you sit there today, that strength is in your mind. You don't have to be a class stopper to do well in life. You don't have to be standing on stage and performing to do well in life. You need to make up your mind. You need to believe in yourself. Don't believe what the other person says. Don't believe what the other, you know, friend of yours thinks about you or what the teacher thinks about you. These are immaterial things. Once you grow up, you'll realize in life, the world will always talk. Live your life the way you're meant to be. When I was in school, almost every action of mine used to be like, you know, what will the teacher think? You know, or what is that girl going to think about me? It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Have faith in yourself, move ahead, and you can do wonders. You can achieve anything you want. I'll give you a small story about a person who wanted to achieve greatness, who wanted to have a lot of money. Today in society, we talk about money as one of the biggest achievements that one can have. You can buy anything you want from money, it seems. So this man wanted a lot of money, and he had a small business. He tried a lot of uh, books and courses and everything, and he still wasn't happy, so he finally went to a monk. So he went to the monk and he said, Guru, can you teach me how to become successful in life and how to become rich? So this monk looks at him and he says, meet me tomorrow at Calicut Beach, 4 o'clock in the morning. So uh, this guy is like, well, what is he saying? Why Calicut Beach? What's so great about Calicut Beach? So anyway, he says, okay, fine. I'll be there. And he's thinking, you know, what is the stupidity? I came to this monk, waste of money, you know. <laughs> So next day morning, four in the morning, he's there in the beach and uh, fully suited up, smart looking guy with full energy to, you know, seize the day. He meets the monk, the monk says, okay, good, now start walking into the sea. So this guy starts walking in, water comes to his about chest level, the monk walks beside him and this guy is wondering, you know, why am I here in the water? Yeah, what kind of mantra, what kind of gyan, what kind of knowledge has this guy got to give me right now? The monk takes him by his head and shoves him inside the water, keeps him underneath. This man is gasping for breath. He's inside the salt, entering his eyes. He's literally dying for a breath of air. The monk holds him there for some more time waits. Just before this guy is about to give up, he's about to collapse, the monk pulls him out. And this man is absolutely angry. He says, what kind of a joke is this? You are about to kill me. The monk says, tell me one thing. What did you want most when you were under the, under the water? He says, I wanted to breathe. He says, how bad? He says, I would have done anything for just having one more breath of fresh air. The monk says, you need to have that want first to become whoever you want. You want to make money, have that want the way you wanted to breathe at that particular moment. There are students here. I mean, your head girl wants to be an astrophysicist, learning quantum mechanics. You have to have that want. That want has to be much more 
than trying to be cool in school. There's somebody sitting here who wants to become a police officer. But that want has to be so strong that when you are sleepy in the morning, you wake up and you say, no, I want to get up. I want to train my mind, train my body. And I want to do well because my focus is clear. I'm hungry for that dream of mine. So I want to tell all, all you kids, want what you desire strongly so much that every night when you're sleeping, you don't dream about BTS and, you know, whatever your latest fads are. You dream about your dream. You have sleepless nights thinking about your vision of yourself. Today, the flag that I unfur unfurled in the morning, the tricolor. Does anybody know the meaning of the various colors? Anyone? Yeah. Very good. Anybody? Yeah, you can, anyone who can speak out aloud. What is orange or saffron for? Is it for light? Courage. Very good. I heard courage over there. Very good. What is white for? Peace. Okay, good. And what is the, what is the meaning of the green band at the bottom? <laughs> Freedom. Okay, okay. I thought it was about agriculture and greenery. I mean, initially when it came up. What about the chakra in the center, the blue one? Anyone? What is it called? Ashok Chakra. Good. Ashok Chakra. Very nice. It's also known as the Dharma Chakra. And Ashok Chakra primarily because it's got 24 spokes and tells us that you need to work 24 hours of the day. But do we? Do we do that? The same tricolor also signifies the colors of three religions. Saffron for Hindus and to a certain extent, Sikhs, white for Christians, green for Muslims. United by one common purpose of the Ashok Chakra or the Dharma Chakra, where we work together 24-7 for this nation. It's important that we today realize this diversity that we have. We are diverse. We were little kingdoms once upon a time, North Kerala, the Zamorians were different from the South Keralites. Cochin dynasty and Travancore dynasty considered themselves different in the way they worship. In fact, Hinduism itself is different the way it's worshipped in North India as it is worshipped in South India or for, for that matter in Nepal. We are different. That flag is the only thing which unites us. I come from an organization where our religion is soldiering. The color of her blood is olive green. And for us, this flag means a lot. When we join the army, we take our oath on the tricolor to serve the country, the president, to defend this nation at all costs, including death. After that, we go to our forward areas, we were deployed along the border, the line of control, where we eyeball the enemy posts, which are maybe 100 meters, 200 meters, maybe a kilometer away. It is this flag which shows us that this post, this place, this part of the ground belongs to us. And we defend that piece of land, inhospitable, dead, untouched at times, till we fall down. Till our bullets run out, we pick up our axe, we pick up our shovels, we fight till the end. There are battlefields, if you ever get a chance to visit Tawang, the 1962 operations were fought by our soldiers at those heights in cotton dresses, in khadi dresses that we wear today, where the temperatures are in minus the trenches still have those soldiers holding their weapons. Yes, we shall always do what is best for the nation.
soldiers will always fight for this country, will defend this country, will live for his ethos. All that we ask in return is be a citizen worth fighting for. Be a citizen worth dying for. Each one of you is capable. Each one of you is strong enough and good enough to serve this country in your own way. I wish you all all the very best in all your endeavors in school. Be good citizens, grow up as honest citizens of this nation. And I'm sure maybe the 100th year of celebration, one of you is going to be standing here and talking about how the nation has done so much in such a short duration. I wish you all the best and Jai Hind.